such a great response on the surveys. Everybody just absolutely loved him. Um, and so we wanted to kick off the new year right, and so we thought of bringing him back and, and have him do another presentation for us, which is the way to go. Um, we really appreciate you coming again and, and supporting our chapter in the way you do. Um, so uh, Dr. Perry is the founder and senior vice president of Catalyst Executive um, Advising and Development, and he's a, a retired Army Lieutenant Colonel and licensed clinical, clinical psychologist clinical trainer and teacher. So he's got a lot of things going on. Um, he's really passionate about transforming lives um, through enhanced, enhancing connection and building trust. And we got a great one about social media and how that's gonna play out into our communication. So it's gonna be um, wonderful. So really appreciate him um, coming in and doing this presentation. And without further ado, That, that's okay. that, I don't know. I think okay. we're going to go straight yeah. from here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that'll work. Good evening, everybody. Okay, so a couple of things um, to start with. Um, thank you for that uh, introduction, Nancy. A little pressure now, right? A little pressure. Um, I mean, first I got to follow Afterburner and then that. There, I did see a guy repel from the ceiling or something. That's crazy. They were probably worth $20,000. So anyway, um, I'm not that expensive. We're not, so call, call us first. Um, Good, but good evening. Thank you so, so much for having me um, be here uh, for your first meeting of the year. Really enjoyed being here in November. Um, and I have to say, I'm, I'm the co-founder of Catalyst. Um, the other co-founder and principal owner is sitting right there. Um, that is Wendy Perry. She's my wife, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Army Nurse. Um, oh, yeah, please give her a hand. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She's got it going on, y'all. So. Um, but tonight, we're going we're gonna to actually extend on this idea of uh, a communication. And we're coming at it from a little bit of a different angle. Who was here um, during your conference in November? OK. All right, very good. So I, I know I recognize a lot of your faces, so it's good to see you again. And um, so before, before we begin, though, let me hopefully we'll get this thing done. Okay, so if you were here, you know how this goes, right? Now, because I'm back so soon, um, you just got, you have to hear it again. And, but I think it's appropriate always to talk about America's team. I'm in therapy right now, I'll be okay. <laughs> so, it's, uh, uh, it, hurt, it, it pains me, but I'm gonna keep looking at that picture until it stops hurting, okay? <laughs> But so I know some of you are not in agreement, Mr. Patriots man up here, whatever. Sit down, Dan. Oh, and thank you, Dan, for the invitation, by the way. All right. So, um, but, but really, America's team is those folks, right? Now, last time you made, I don't know if you recall, I kind of forgot the, the uh, Coast Guard. Innocent mistake, but I think um, I, I got to correct that. And so the Coast Guard is represented up there right now. But I got to tell you all, and, and I, I, I say this every time I'm in front of, and I'm in front of a crowd. Um, you know, the, the the slide before I came up said something about um, you all being in debt to you know um, veterans. I, I think we're really in debt to you. The support that we've gotten um, has been nothing short of phenomenal. And I was with a group of folks on Monday uh, from the Vietnam era. And we were, just, we were talking about the difference, right, in terms of um, how America has really rallied behind and, and supported us. I'm telling you now, if, I, if you go to Atlanta in a uniform, you cannot get your credit card out of your pocket because somebody pays for your food. Um, that's really phenomenal. And so I just thank you all. So if you served, if you ever supported anybody who served, if you said thank you for your service, thank you. All right. So. Seriously. Did you get any? Did you take pictures? 
cute baby on the internet. Is this guy always on vacation? Costa Rica, vacay. Did you just wipe him like host about my uncle dying? Office, whatever. No. Hold stop, hold stop. I'm lying here. Why are you Instagramming the lineups? How can he get so many followers? He's a dentist. Hey guys, you on Twitter? Follow me. You just got two retweets. I What is going on, America? <laughs> What's funny is that all that was totally realistic and it's happening all the time, right? Um, so we're, we're gonna talk about how that is impacting the way that we communicate. Now hopefully, we're gonna go in a direction, in a couple of directions that you all are not anticipating, right? But um, I, I think it's uh, appropriate to recap a couple of things. And if you were here in November, you'll recognize some of these. And if you read this, this, this document, then you'll recognize um, some of these charts. Um, people who communicate effectively are higher performers. Now, um, according to this stats, by a factor of you know, five to six. But I think it goes without saying, and you don't need a rocket scientist or a PhD to know that if you're an effective performer, you're probably gonna perform better than people who are not. People who uh, um, communicate effectively have more successful projects. And you see here, right, um, um, they meet their goals, 80% to 52%, right, on time, on budget, more so than people who don't communicate effectively. No surprise. Right, dollars at risk. Um, if you are able to communicate effectively, then you're able to minimize your liability and dollars at risk. <coughs> All right, and so about one out of five projects that are unsuccessful, that's 20%, by the way, are unsuccessful because of poor or ineffective communication. All right, so um, impact of poor communication here, there's a list, you're probably not surprised about many of these. I highlighted some of the ones that I think you could actually attribute directly to how you communicate person to person, person to people, right, customer service, managing change, delivering on time, and injuries. And we'll talk a little bit about why that makes sense. Okay. All right, they covered last quarter, Andy. Thanks for getting us up to speed. It's time to get the numbers on the redesign at the end of the week. Is that correct? Excellent. All right, now the San Diego Conference is coming up the next month, one of the most important in our country. <laughs> I, I could not stop watching that video. I love that video, right? <laughs> Has anybody ever felt like they wanted to do that? Okay, so here's the bad news. You can't do that <laughs> for a number of reasons. I mean, getting sued and all that, but the world is different now, right? The way that we, that we exchange information is a little bit different. Who has kids in middle school, high school right now? All right, and so the day that, that they told us that they were actually using those cell phones and tablets in school. How did you feel? What did you think? Exactly, right? No way. And, and of course, with good reason, right? There's a lot of concern around that. Now, smartphone ownership um, is pretty high. I thought it was higher, right? But according to the Pew Center, uh, smartphone phone ownership sits, you know, um, look at, you can look at the age ranges and by no surprise, 18 to 29 year olds, 85% of 18 to 29 year olds have smartphones, right? Um, you know, even if you're what, uh, up to 64, more than half, right? And if you look at the very bottom stat, $75,000 or more income, 84%. 
So most people have smartphones. I wonder if I could find a person in this room who does not have a smartphone. Anybody? No way, are you kidding? Okay, I'm gonna, can we get, I'm gonna take a selfie with you guys later on. <laughs> okay, so, all right. But high smartphone ownership, that's the first thing to keep in mind. Now, using them for social media, watching videos, music, podcasts, etc. If you take a look, by no surprise, again, that younger age bracket, the 18 to 29 year olds by far, um, are using it for those purposes more than anybody else. However, you know, look at folks up to, you know, statistically speaking, up to 49 years old, 77% social networking, right? 50 plus, 55% social networking, right? My grandmother's on Facebook. I'm not even on Facebook, at least not, you know, not a personal account, right? Um, so watching videos, you can, you can kind of see the numbers and look at the trends. The bottom line here is that most people are using those phones for something. Okay, so lots of electronics, a lot of things going on. Any guesses to what the average human attention span is? I won't leave it open ended, I'll give you some choices. So, really. So, tell me what you think. You said eight seconds, you said eight, eight, you say two. Okay, so some people in here are reading and some people are not. That is, but okay, so yeah, it's uh, eight seconds. So that's down four seconds in 13 years. Oh no, okay, no, no, that is not the wild part. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the wild part. <laughs> Apparently, we have an attention span that is shorter than that of a goldfish. Now I, know, now, I know what you're thinking. I know the question that's on everybody's mind right now. How in the heck do you measure the attention span of a goldfish? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> they wrote it, I, you know, I'm going with it, right? But this was actually based on a study that was done by um, Microsoft in Canada. And so um, a lot of what I'm gonna show you came out of that study, 2015, right? So it's 2017 now, so probably we're at like seven seconds, I would assume, right? So some people less. Um, and, and I don't have it here, but if you look at some of the literature, people are checking cell phones anywhere from what, 85 to 125 plus times every day. You know, at least once every hour. And there's something about that phone. There's something about getting those messages, right? Um, we'll, hopefully we'll talk a little bit about that if we have time. And so this is the result. It's what we get. And so why do I have an emoticon up there, an emoji or whatever they call them now, right? <laughs> Why do I have that there? Because this is communication today, right? Now, I, okay, time for some honesty, and it's okay, nobody in this room will judge you. <laughs> <laughs> Who in this room has ever used an emoji? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, right? Who in this room surprised themselves the first time they actually used that emoji? <laughs> I'm like, there's no way, smiley face, what are you talking about? My name's Mike, I'm not using a smiley, yeah, smiley face, right? Or frowny face, or whatever, we use them, why? Because they say more with one little symbol than we can say in a paragraph often. Okay, so, um, that's important though, right? Seeing things in short little snippets. Um, our ability to focus long term is, um, well, it's just not, that high. He, this chart shows us um, long-term focus um, based on the extent of your media use and your tech savviness, so to speak. So heavier the media, then the less you're able to focus. The more tech savvy you are, interestingly enough, less you're able to focus. And so you'll see they're broken down into light, medium, heavy use, and the, the various types of media you might use. Web, um, multi-screening. Multi-screening is an interesting phenomenon. We're, I'm definitely going to talk about that. Social media, et cetera. But the bottom line is um, our current, uh, the technology that we're using right now, um, our brains are changing. Okay, now, I know what some of y'all were thinking. Well, you know what? Not me. Yeah, you. So this is broken down into age groups, right? This is the ability to sustain attention. Now, there are a lot of measures that went into these percentages, right? So it's hard, it's difficult to say 35% of what? But 
they did brain scans, they did video, they evaluated people, people's, um, they monitored their motion, their movements, how many times they looked at phones, right? And so they came up with some metric, and so bottom line, what it tells us is from, the, from, our, from our younger generation up to folks who are um, a little more senior, 31 to 35% is the range of being able to sustain attention, not that high because we're all in this. We all, have, we all have phones, most of us, except for two. And, <laughs> you know, HD televisions. There's a reason why, does anybody remember um, what a standard definition screen looks like? You know, when you go into a restaurant now and you see that box sitting there and that TV is sitting there and it's on, what do you say? Oh man, this is unwatchable, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, HD, when it first came out, you can see the, you see the hair, the beard, and the, and the drops of the water, and you know, the, the whatever, mist flying off of the football. You can see all that stuff. It was amazing. And how many of you look at your television in awe now? Right, right? You're looking for the next thing, right? Look at what, to see what Samsung has next. Our brains are changing, right? Okay. So. These, according to that study, these are the, some, of the, some of the top factors that affect attention span. Extent of your media consumption, social media usage, multi-screening behavior, and technology adoption. Now, multi-screening is simply having a computer, a smartphone, a tablet. Now, you know, and I was like, multi-screening? And I look up, and I'm sitting at my desk, and I have laptop, laptop, phone, <laughs> and my tablet's over there, because, you know, I, I hadn't grabbed it yet. So, um, so here's some of the impact on your brain. All right, this is actually not a bad thing, right? Sustained attention is a problem, but with uh, increased social media use, there is this immediate uh, increase, a short burst of high attention right at the <coughs> beginning when you begin taking this stuff in, right? So this is also very interesting. Heavy social media users pay more attention in interactive environments and less in passive. That means when there's a lot going on, they are able actually to, be, to take in information still. But if you have to sit somebody who tends to use social media heavily and sit them in front of television, then they're not as attentive. Isn't that interesting? So for those of you who've been screaming at that kid, like, you know, listen to me while you're, stop texting and listen. They're probably listening, actually. And the data would suggest that they can take that information in as they're doing what they're doing. But I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just saying, that's the data. You can still, still tell me, like, look in the eye, because that's, <laughs> I don't want any trouble. <laughs> All right. Um, also, if you're, if you're an early tech adopter, that means no matter what generation you're in, if you're, if you're getting that next smartphone, if you're jumping on the next app, if you're like in tune with all those things, then your brain tends to work in a very similar way. And um, a very short burst of high attention at the beginning, which becomes very important for messaging, marketing, and all those things. All right, so, but multiple, screen, multiple screens become a problem because people begin, begin um, having difficulty filtering distractions when they have the more screens they have, apparently. Now, so if you're a moderate social media user, that's about the sweet spot in terms of being able to um, attend to what's going on around you. As you increase and you get into what they consider um, heavier use, then attention begins to degrade. Okay, so apparently if you are a heavy user of digital media, then you can take in information from all around. So it's kind of what we said. All right, so, but these are the folks that are driving all of this, right? Folks who were born into this, um, this generation, into this time in history where all of this technology exists. About 34% 30, of the workforce. What does that mean? That means None of this is going anywhere. So if you believe that there is a chance we're going back to the good old days, forget about it. It's not going to happen, OK? So and there's a good reason why. Technology, despite all of what I just told you, some of you are probably thinking, ah, oh, man, this is, this is pretty horrible, right? <laughs> but this is what is possible.
So now I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Why on earth did he just show us a Gundam style, style clip? Why did I show you that? Anybody? Flash mobs. Flash mobs. Say a little bit more about, okay, you know, I'm coming over here. This is, we're, going to, we're going to talk show mode. Say a little bit more about flash mobs. Uh, flash mobs are when a group of people decide to do something in a sp specific time, specific place, and they usually use social media in order to organize it. It usually happens very quickly, out of nowhere, hit, and then go. That's why they call it a flash mob. Pay that man. Exactly, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> the key is, I mean, now, you all are project managers, right? You all know how to put some stuff together and make some things happen, bring some people together and make some things happen. Flash mob. Put together by a bunch of folks who don't, who've never seen each other, don't know each other, don't have project management certifications. Well, well, actually, maybe they do. Maybe some of you have been in your own flash mob, <laughs> right? But they're somehow able to get all these people in the same place at the same time doing the same thing. And that happened everywhere in the world. Go on YouTube and you will go all day for many days, because every country you can find, that happened. Every city, every college, everybody. Except for like me and a couple of my friends, right? <laughs> so that is a powerful platform. If you can make something like that happen, it's a powerful platform. How do you use that in order to do whatever it is you need to do? So that's where, actually, that, that's where the, the bright side of all this social media business comes into play. Because, in, and I just put up a few here, but there are a number, that have, a number of things that have been designed to bring people together to help folks communicate, right, that are quite effective at doing that. Um, they're typically inexpensive, free often, you know, high utilization. Typically, if you have a phone, you can actually use whatever the application is, or if you have an internet connection, right? And you're able to share information near real time. I think, you know, 10, 20 years ago, Folks would have like, you know, they would have been, you know, kind of watering at the mouth to have some um, applications that did that or some tools that did that. Okay. So what's the value? Keeping people connected, exchanging information, being able to give immediate feedback and information, reduce training costs. I'll let you read the rest. So and these are just some ideas about how actually you could actually use social media in business to get some things done that might be effective for you. Now, this one actually, I think the, um, that executive leader blog, blogs, podcasts, um, videos, if you're a leader and you're trying to get the word out to folks, you're trying to keep people motivated around a vision or a mission, it's a great way to do it. And by the way, you should probably take advantage of um, this, uh, this conditioning that we have, right? There's a reason that Facebook has exploded. And some people think it's because you can connect to everybody that you know. I don't think that's the reason. You know what I think the reason is? It's likes. Likes, right? So Facebook has created a token economy, right? You put something out and somebody clicks it, they like it. And when you see that like, you like it and it gives you just a little shot of dopamine, right? It makes you feel good, and it makes you do whatever you did more, <laughs> bigger, right? You know, Instagram, same thing. My kids have Instagram, and, they, and, they, and it's down to a science. Some of you in the room know the science, right? You send out your post, and you know how long you wait before you check and see how many likes you got in Instagram. And, it, and they even dial it down to the time of day, right? So you can't send it middle of the day. People are busy, so you wait till like six. <laughs> you send it. <laughs> And then, you know, so you get to, and they want like 200, well, it was 200, now it's like, I don't know what it is, but it's like there's this number that they have, right? Oh, man, I hit 198. Mm. <laughs> Need a better picture next time, right? And so they just do, like I said, it's more, it's bigger. It's, and so people get kind of hooked on that little bit of pleasure they get from getting that feedback. So how do you use that wherever you are? Find ways to use the system and to provide that feedback. Or to provide people the opportunity to know that whatever they sent, or whatever they put out there, was heard and received by somebody and appreciated. Okay, so 
Social media is the same attention, a little lower, generally speaking. Um, your ability to kind of select from a number of things going on um, worsened as you add additional screens, things that you're looking at. kind of makes sense. All right, and your ability to alternate and go back and forth and pull in and out um, can be okay until you begin to ramp up the, di the digital media use and you lose the ability to shift from task to task. So here's some recommendations um, I have for you, okay? So first of all, as I said, forget about it. Technology is going nowhere, right? So what do we do? We could like snatch up phones in, in the offices and you know destroy them, or we could find a way to use those. When you're sending messages, select the appropriate message. Who in here, you know what, I won't have you raise your hands, because I know it's everybody, right? You know, you get a message and you're like, why am I on this list, right? And what happens is the next message you get from that person, you're kind of you know, looking at it a little sideways and you're a little skeptical because you're like, you know what, this might be some more garbage from Joe over an account. So I'm not gonna open that, right? So make sure that you send messages to the audience that needs to get them. Very important, particularly when we're dealing with people whose brains apparently who has transformed in the way, in the way that ours have. Determine what you want. Are you blasting information? Do you need feedback, right? Because sometimes using social media, using electronics is the way to go. Sometimes it is not. It's important to know the difference though because I know some of you in this room have said, you know, I just like it. Why well, send an email and I can just get up and walk down the hall? Well, because by the time you get up and walk down the hall, you could have like contacted somebody halfway around the world twice, right? <laughs> sometimes walking down the hall is not necessary. I know we, we love it and I'm a psychologist, I'm a leadership expert. There's nothing like human interaction. But for the purposes of what we're talking about in terms of exchange of information, um, don't necessarily de default to what you've always done, okay? Um, figure out what, what your audience is gonna hear and how they're gonna receive it and consider that, okay? So use the appropriate medium for that, whether that's email, whether it's text messaging, whether it's whether you all have a, a Slack account at work or whatever it is, select the appropriate medium. And make sure that it's based on what they need, not what you prefer. Yes, you know, you know, some of y'all like, yeah, whatever. No, I'm, seriously. Okay. Incorporate technology into your current communication strategy if you haven't already. And if you don't know how to do it, ask the people around you because they definitely do, without a doubt. A few more. Tailor the message, right? To, uh, and this is not, I mean, y'all like, yeah, of course, yes. Tailor the message to who you want to receive it so they, they can receive it. And make sure, remember what I said, attention spans are typically, or should I say, there's higher attention at the beginning when a message is first received. So whatever you gotta say, skip the preamble and get down to business, right? We're talking people who speak in you know, emojis and hashtags and Twitter, right? So get the message out like right now. Be clear on your expectations for whether or not you expect to get any feedback, any follow-up as well, and make that clear to understand. And if you're sending out to an entire organization, diversify your approach. It's not necessarily always efficient, but it will be more effective for you. So if you know you have a cross-section of individuals who, who receive things in different ways, just have platforms to do that so you can saturate the entire organization. And of course, this is not really my job, but talking, talking um, on this, this uh, tight topic, I think it's important to talk about the precautions you take just in terms of security, you know, networks and all that. Uh, you know, there's somebody at wherever you work that's gonna be on, all on top of that, but I think it bears mentioning that um, there's probably system requirements to consider, um, risk to consider when you're dealing electronically, okay? So make sure you just have policies and norms set up to deal with things like that. Does anybody have any, any questions? Sir? What do you think about the tweets from our president-elect? <laughs> <laughs> the, the question was, I got, I got it. The question was, what do I think about the tweets from our president-elect? <laughs> only thing I say about those is that the entire world sees them. 
I mean, so they, I mean, he sends them and they're out. And so he has, um, breath. From, he has breath, exactly. So that, that's what I think about that. And that's all. <laughs> trying to set me up. Who planted him? <laughs> so, okay. Any other questions? Sir. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting that, that um, we as leaders that we have a workforce that totally gets it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a great point, John. And I think the important one, the, the thing that comes to mind first for me when you say that is, um, is what they're doing outside of the bounds of what is allowed, first and foremost, right? Because oftentimes we go with our preference. It's like that's not what we did, or you know, you shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z. Question is, you know, is it allowed? If it's not allowed, then the answer is easy. If it's allowed, then it becomes a matter of, you know, whether or not it's effective for the task at hand. You know, are is, are the things that aren't getting done because you're doing that, or are there ways that we can use that to help get things done, right? Um, because in, and in some some training sessions we do, I've accepted the fact that everybody has a phone, and when you say shut it down, a lot of times they don't, and oftentimes. It, is it weird? Is, is it me? When people, you know, when they're driving or sitting at a table, it's funny. It's almost like there's a, there an imaginary cape or a shroud that comes over you and like nobody can see me as I do that, <laughs> right? It's weird. <laughs> but somehow people think they can't, you can't be seen. And yet, you can. Um, but <laughs> are there ways that you can kind of use that? Like, so during some training sessions, I'll actually have interactive things up on the board so they can ask, answer questions and respond to surveys and things like that that actually populate real time as, they're, as they are on their phones. And that way, um, I'm, may, I'm, I'm getting them to, I'm, just, I'm having them to um, you know, remain attentive to what's happening because what's happening is you know, a part of what, what they have in their hand, right? And they can actually participate. So are there creative ways to do that at the job in order to facilitate some communication amongst the team? So, but um, yeah, so don't, but hey, you know, don't shut them down immediately, people. You know, let's not be, you know, um, well, anyway. <laughs> like I said, can't beat them. <laughs> Join them if it's, with, if it's allowable. Any other questions, comments? Okay, well, I appreciate you all um, uh, listening to me and not falling asleep. Um, <laughs> So um, and if you ever need anything from me at all, please let me know. That's my contact information up on the board. And um, we also have some business cards as well. But um, in terms of speaking, coaching, leader development, things like that, um, it's kind of what we do. So, and we don't charge $20,000 yet. <laughs> Get in on the ground floor, <laughs> all right? But, um, but hey, look, thank you all. Y'all have a great 2017. Thanks, appreciate it.